In this uh, set of videos, we're going to talk about common stocks. And, and of course, we're going to begin with just a general description of the security itself. So what do, what do stocks have to offer, right? Well, common stock is a form of ownership. Um, it's certainly not without its challenges. We'll talk about some of the pros and cons in a second. But we refer to common shareholders frequently as residual owners. And this is a reflection also of the risk that's inherent in stocks. And that is that there are no guarantees. You are only entitled to something if there is something left over. So how can you use this then? So we can tailor our investments for specific needs. Since there's such a wide range of stocks, we can create portfolios that are very individualized. We can create portfolios that will provide steady streams of income through dividends. We can also create portfolios on the other side of the coin that are really increasing mostly in value rather than in dividends. Now, stock behavior is rather let's use the word volatile, right? It's uncertain, right? When the market's strong, you can really expect a benefit from price appreciation. However, the market doesn't always move forward. There are bad days. Um, as they mentioned here, uh, in the 118 year period of the Dow, it's only dropped, it's only been negative 40 times. Um, roughly two-thirds of the time it was up at least one percent and at its height actually 82 percent so so the dow does show that the stock market has some growth potential there are obviously we talked about big returns can come from capital gains certainly more from capital gains than they do from dividends Right. Stocks generally earn positive returns over a long period of time. And as they mentioned here, from 1930 to 2014, the average return was about 11.4%. Um, as they mentioned, clearly not without risk. In 2008, it lost 36% of its value. From 2000 to 2009, it only averaged rate of return of 1.1%. So as you can see that, you know, the stock market really fluctuates over time. And if we look at the average returns, you can see that almost any time frame you pick, there are no generally negative total returns. There's always some kind of a dividend return. And then there's also then the rate of returns that come from capital gains. Sometimes those are negative. So again, you can see that what there's a wide range of returns dependent on your holding period and how long you want to be invested in the stock market. One of the things that we'll talk about throughout the whole course is obviously that there are many variables that have influence on investing. The housing market in particular has a very strong impact on the stock market. And although the average stock price uh, peaked in 2006, it dramatically fell in the next several years. Lots of reasons for that. Uh, when they're talking about weakness in the housing sector, um, my personal opinion is that the weakness wasn't in the housing sector. The weakness was in the banking industry and the financing industry. So there's lots of reasons why the uh, market lost so much money it was certainly tied to housing but why did the housing market actually collapse over that time frame so what are the pros of having stock ownership you have opportunity for substantial returns they're typically going to outperform bonds uh, sometimes by a great deal there you can protect against inflation since most of the time, it's going to exceed the inflation rate. They're easy to buy and sell. 
costs are, are modest, uh, information is readily available, and for most folks, the unit cost per share is, is low enough that it can encourage people to actually purchase and invest. Now, the cons, though, are the risk levels, right? A very, there are so many variables that, that will have an influence on the stock market. So how we create our portfolios and how we ultimately uh, diversify our risks away will be dependent on how, how much these risks ultimately influence our portfolios. Stock returns are volatile. They're very hard to predict. Um, stocks generally distribute less current income than some other investment alternatives. So bonds pay more current income. The challenge with bonds, though, is they really don't have that much in total return. So if you look here, the red line here is the coupon yield on corporate bonds. And you can see that that coupon yield is higher than the dividend yield on S&P 500 stocks. But when we add the capital gains per year to the blue line, we end up uh, far above the red line uh, from corporate bonds. <clears throat> so as we work through our discussion here, talking about the security of common stocks, right, we'll have some definitions and some uh, little clues along the way of how we're going to discuss this. But equity capital represents ownership, right? Equity and ownership mean the same things. So frequently we'll refer to stocks as being, <coughs> excuse me, equity securities. <coughs> so what kinds of stocks are there? How do we get them? Stocks are publicly traded issues. These are shares that are readily available to the general public. They're bought and sold at exchanges. Now, there are corporations that are private corporations. They don't publicly trade. As investors, you and I cannot typically invest in those kinds of companies. Now, when companies want to issue more shares, when they need more money, they will do that several ways. One of the ways is through something called a public offering. This is where they offer shares to the public at large. A rights offering is when we give stockholders, the current stockholders, a right of first refusal, if you will. So we will allow them to purchase new shares first. But in the end, it's all the same, right? The company needs more money, so they're going to increase the equity in their capital structure by issuing more shares. Companies sometimes will do things called stock spin-offs. Essentially, this is a process where the company will um, take one of its divisions and it will distribute stock on that division to the public. So essentially, it, it divorces itself, at least closely at least, it'll divorce itself from the parent company. Now, it could do this just because it doesn't fit as well. Um, that they maybe uh, the company feels it's more too diversified. They want to focus on some core products, but a stock spinoff is just essentially it's a public distribution of shares. Except the people that get the shares are the existing company uh, shareholders of the parent company. Stock splits. This is when a company changes the number of shares that are available. Now this is kind of a misnomer because even though there are a different number of shares available, each investor gets the same percentage of shares that they used to have. So imagine if we have a pie, right? And there's two pieces of the pie. You own one piece and I own the other piece. That means we both have 50% ownership. What if we split the stock two for one? So for every one share you get, you have, you get two, and likewise for me. So now we have a pie that's the exact same size pie, but now it has four pieces. 
you own two, I own two, we still own 50% of the company. So typically why this is done is to bring the stock price into a more uh, attractive level for investors, right? We would like to keep this stock price lower so that more people will invest in the company. Now another uh, type of stock is something called treasury stock. And treasury stock, these shares uh, essentially were used to be owned by the investing public, but now the company buys them back. It reduces the number of shares outstanding. So it does reduce the supply of stocks. Now typically we, the company keeps these shares. They don't destroy them and they can use them to pay stock dividends for employee stock option plans, use them to buy other companies. Typically when companies do this, they feel that the stock is undervalued, right? So essentially they're buying it back cheap. They think it's worth more. So eventually what will happen if the stock price comes back up, they might reissue uh, those shares and obviously get more money, right? More uh, capital for the company. So there's lots of reasons why a company might do this. Um, the short term impact is usually that the stock prices are going to go up a little bit because of this repurchase. So that's the end of video one.